so we've got Darko, David. Do you have a preference? I feel like Darko uh, is know, my, most my, of my friends call me. Yeah, most of my friends call me Darko. Okay. So, and that's kind of what I'm known in the community as, so yeah. that, that generally works a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. We have Darko joining <laughs> us from Orange County, California. That is right. Okay. Dude, what do we have? We've got three... Bro, well, for a couple all, of us, all former, Southern, yeah, we're all originally from Southern California. Yeah. So yeah. here we are coming together now in different locales. Phoenix, one still in Orange County. Kyle, you're out in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, would you? I mean, would you technically say you're in Indianapolis, Indiana? Yeah. 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 That that is literally where I am. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Well, we're excited to have Darko on the podcast as the first guest that that Kyle and I have had on the podcast together. I know that's that his, wild, man. Yeah, I for know. as long as we've been doing this, you are the first official guest. Yeah, well, at least since I've been an official co-host, I know yeah. that uh, you and Mr. Pendergraf had a couple of guests on. I know you um, better watch out, Darko. Mike started <laughs> off as a guest and then ended up <laughs> joining. Now he he practically runs this thing, man. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Soon to be the Nice Like Mike podcast. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> cool. Well, we're going to jump right into it. I think one of the things that I think is a is a cool topic to cover, especially because Home Gym Con is like our unofficial official sponsor of this podcast. But Darko, I know that you had, let's see, in year one of Home Gym Con, I would say that you had doubts about it as a convention. And then heading into year two, there was even some reluctance after you had signed up. And I want, I would love if you to just kind of like jump in on that, like your thoughts yeah. before Home Gym Con post home gym con like let's get into that a little bit yeah you know so year one i think it was in april that year also mm -hmm. i mean at that point i'd only been in business for like six months and then it's getting out to indianapolis driving to french lick you know five six grand probably and maybe seeing a hundred people at that point it just it didn't make a lot of sense and then you know just the idea you know every convention i've ever been to in my professional career was always somewhere like orlando or vegas or anaheim or you know somewhere where it's easy to get to from the airport uh somewhere that has activities you know for people to bring their families so year one you know i, I don't think i was absolutely 100 percent negative about it i thought it was cool that they were doing it it just didn't make financial sense for me and even even if I wasn't a vendor, I, I, I wouldn't have won either, probably, just because at that point, they only had 20, 25 vendors, I think. Yeah, so even year two, I signed up pretty early for year two. Still some hesitation on it, just because, again, you're looking at, you know, for me, I sell rack accessories. So I, I need a rack. I need a rack to show uh, all my equipment. And at that point, you know, you got to have products. You know, I mean, if you're coming with one or two small little accessories, it doesn't make sense. So year two, yeah, I mean, I was still kind of hesitant. I think I waited until the last month to book my hotels and flights because, again, yeah, it's, you know, I think I, I think in total, was like five to seven grand I spent. Getting so out there, that's getting why you got the red eye, the red eye flight yeah. out there. You booked it last minute. Yeah. Oh, um, that was rough. That, yeah, that was not a fun experience. But, you know, and then the hesitation always is, you know, how many people are you going to draw? Um, you know, from talking with people on Discord, talking with people on Instagram, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not flying into Indianapolis, driving two, two and a half hours to get to French Lake where there there isn't anything. There's nothing right. else there. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing there. Um, so, you know, of course, you know, this has because you want a return on investment, you know, especially for a small business. You're spending seven grand, you know. That, that's a pretty big cost um, yeah. for somebody, you know, that's just starting out still. You know, if I was able to drive there, you know, that obviously would have saved money. That would have saved a lot of shipping because um, I had to ship, you know, eight boxes out there. And I don't I don't get these fantastic rates, you know, that these big companies do. So, it, you know, that ended up costing quite a bit. But you know what? Going there, it, it was an amazing experience. And, you know, I, I do wish more people would have went because it was just it was so fun. There's so much equipment to try. And then, you know, we all went and hung out afterwards. And you get to know all these people that we've been talking to online for the last three, four years. And uh, it was awesome. I mean, I I mean, I think I told Jake several times, I'm like, man, you guys just, you absolutely killed it. Like, I mean, this is, it's such a great event. It was, everything worked out. 
So, yeah, no, I mean, I've been trying to tell everybody now, you know, like, get to the next gym con. You know, it's going to be easier to get to than a major city. Um, and you're missing out if you don't go. Because, I, I mean, even me, like, I, I was kind of bummed that, like, I was there as a vendor. I kind of want them to be an <laughs> right. attendee. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much equipment where I'm like, man. But, like, I'm like, yeah, I can't get away from my booth for too long because, you know, it's really just me. Um, so, question for you, follow-up question. Yeah. Like when you're looking at it from a vendor perspective and you're looking about the the cost going into it and, you know, cost benefit analysis, is it going to be worth it? I feel like and and this is from like the spectator perspective, I feel like there's so much more value than just how many people are going to see my stuff, you know, my 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 items, how much it's going to cost to get out there, how much it's going to ship. It's like all the relationships that you all the new people you're you're meeting all the people online that you've known for years that you actually get to sit down and have conversations with like is that sort of what changed your mindset around it and in, in terms of it it being worth it yeah i mean all of it combined you know makes it really worth it you know so like one um just from the financial side of it you know my sales jumped nice. for, the, for like from may until july they jumped up probably like 30 percent wow Whoa. um now is that all directly from home gym con i'm not sure but you know when people are posting videos and they're posting you know a bunch of stuff on instagram and you meet some of these new other influencers that you've never talked to before or seen and then they get a hold of your product uh all that adds up you know so like a 30 percent increase for me in sales is huge um and then yeah on top of that you know developing relationships so you know like i met some of the guys from titan you know i've had you know a call with them before uh well after the show i mean and you know even just some other you know relationships like you know meeting dean from black widow you know me and dean we talk on instagram probably every day at this point so a lot yeah it is developing those relationships with i mean for me like small manufacturers influencers because influencers for me i'm i'm the worst uh i'm absolutely terrible about reaching out to influencers (laughs) about sending them product or doing anything like that and, you know, it's something I need to be better about. But so being in front of them, getting to meet them at Home Gym Con definitely has opened that up a little bit more. So, yeah, I mean, from a financial sense, it's definitely probably been worth it's it, It's probably made up the cost, actually, entirely. And then on top of it, you have these relationships going forward with some of these other manufacturers and influencers that you wouldn't have had without going. So what I'm hearing you say is you would recommend anybody who's sitting on the fence wondering if it's worth it. You're basically saying, yes, it's 100 percent totally worth it. Go do it. Oh, I mean, 100 percent. I mean, yeah. it, it was it was worth it at the last show. I mean, this next show, I'm guessing they're going to have four times as many attendees. For sure. Oh, um, absolutely. Definitely more vendors already. I think they already have more vendors than they had last year. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you love home gym stuff. I mean, absolutely. As a vendor, this is the place to go. Yeah. Uh, just don't steal any of my booth spots that I want. So. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, I know that Jake has been in the last day or two, he's been assigning booth spaces. I'm not a vendor. So you as a vendor, do you have any influence or ability to persuade Jake on like where you are located? Do you have any preferences around that? Um, so I, I'm still waiting to get my little place in line, but you know, I, I know I was like the seventh person to sign up this year. Yeah. I mean, may, maybe, maybe earlier. I literally woke up at like four in the morning. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming. I will be there. Nice. Sign me up. So I know I'm still waiting. Obviously you want to get somewhere where there's a lot of foot traffic. So I'm kind of wanting to see where Rogue's going to put their booth also and try and find somewhere between Rogue and Rep. Yeah. Um, the high traffic you know, booths. Basically high trap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, hope, you know, rogue next year, hopefully they send, you know, they're able to talk a little bit more with the attendees. It seemed like they're, you know, people have kind of found them to be standoffish. So we'll see. I mean, but I'm waiting. Uh, obviously you want somewhere where it's high traffic. So yeah, uh, I'm still waiting. Yeah. And I think it's obviously going to be a bigger floor space, right? Whereas even at, uh, French Lick Resort, it was big, but it was still something you could l- loop through it, you know, numerous times yeah. in your in a few hours there. Maybe not so much the case uh, in Louisville uh, nice. at the event center there. That's going to be much bigger. And 
I think, you know, as we saw even in the smaller space in French Lick, like the big grand booths like, you know, Rogue was a bit, pretty much a showstopper booth in terms yeah. of just scale, right? Like they didn't mm -hmm. just build east to west. They built, you know, north yeah. to south. Like they went tall as well. So you couldn't you couldn't miss them. So that makes sense. Um, so you talked a little bit about kind of like, the quantitative results of your decision uh, or benefits of you deciding to go, right? You saw a boost in sales. Uh, you've built some relationships. Uh, maybe let's talk a little bit more about like the qualitative stuff, like the stuff that's a little bit more difficult to measure um, specifically around like, were there any specific meetings or relationships that uh, kind of sparked up from you being at home gym con that wouldn't have happened for you otherwise like if you weren't kind of you know in the same space as somebody for you know two or three the two or three days that we were there was there anything that stands out to you from from those interactions that you had you know so like before home gym con uh you know rogue had already reached out to me about okay. possibly reselling some products so like that one you know i i was able to meet uh zach over at rogue who is my main contact which was cool, but like it probably wouldn't have that probably wouldn't have made any difference for me with my relationship with Rogue going to the show. But being able to meet, you know, some of the guys at like Titan, some of the guys, you know, Adam at Rep. Yeah, and you know, I think I think there's a lot of value to that because, you know, while I'm still a small manufacturer, you know, there's always the idea of being able to collaborate with, you know, some company because there's products that I, I I I can dream of them, I can I can think of them, I can see them in my head. Uh, but I can't make them. I don't have the capacity to make some of these things. So yeah, always being able to get in touch with some of these companies, you know, and either get on calls with them, like an hour long call with Titan a couple months back, they were kind of interested in making some of my products. Um, Sweet. But you know, as, as of right now, though, I still, you know, I, I, I like the American made aspect of my company. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of a hold up when, you know, po you know, possibly talking with some of these other companies is, I like myself to be made in America. That's just me though. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit more specific because I'm, I'm in the know, but didn't you wind up sitting next to pillar four <clears throat> individuals <laughs> at the first dinner and, uh, and there was some fruit to be bared from that that meeting Ooh, tell me about the fruit i didn't hear oh. about this this juicy fruit at the table yeah you know that was this is a dinner i'll never forget for the rest of my life uh, <laughs> for all the right and wrong for, reasons yeah. oh man uh, let's hear it so if you went to dinner the first night at home gym con, so like last year a lot you know a lot fewer attendees so and then you know so when they had their dinners i think everyone got exactly what they were expecting these are the VIP um, dinners for, the for VIP those dinners. out of the know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These were the VIP dinners. So these were paid dinners. And, um, you know, a lot of people showed So this year, a lot of people showed up to that first night of dinner. A lot of people uh, that weren't that supposed to be there. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. yeah, that didn't pay. Yeah. Right? So basically, they, like, started running out of everything. They ran out of food. And, like, we were hanging out outside when everyone started getting seated and eating. And so we were kind of last. So we go in and then there's nowhere to sit. There's no tables. There's no chairs. Oh no. And there's no, there's no silverware either. <laughs> Jesus, and, um, really? So we get our dinner, you know, it's like, I mean, it was like a pot roast or something. I can't remember exactly. And uh, so we have to go sit outside and I'm like, I need to go find some silverware. So we go ask the staff there. They're like, we have like eight spoons. We got eight spoons. This is what we got. <laughs> and, uh, just uh, just so anyone listening or watching, so this facility, it was the dinner was at a separate facility that, that you know is made for these events. So they bring exactly what they think they're you know what people sign up for. Um, so it was no fault of Jake or anybody that organized it. Um, you know he basically said this is how many people are coming. You know they brought what he's you know by the numbers he told them, and just more people basically showed up that didn't pay. So they, you know no fault of Jake's. Um, but so we get stuck outside at a table, like a cocktail table, uh, eating pot roast with our spoons. And um, <laughs> so like oh, we're talking to the two guys at our cocktail table. I'm like, oh, who are you guys here with? They're like, oh, yeah, we're at uh, Pillar 4. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I know. I know who you guys are. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I was like, hey, yeah, man. I'm like, what do I need to do to get on Coop's radar. He's like, oh no, he knows about you. Like we all know about you. We just, you know, I'm like, well, all right, what do I need to do to get some product in your guys' hands? You know, have him try them out, whatever. 
all right, here's my email. Email me when you get back. And like, uh, if Coop wants to review your stuff or see your stuff, then we'll get that all set up. Um, so, I mean, it's been cool. You know, Coop's mentioned me in a few videos, you know, like most innovative bar storage this last year. And, uh, you know, on his personal Instagram, he's done some reels with a few of my products. Um, but still, yeah, hoping, you know, at some point if I can get like a, even I'll take a 10 minute, I'll take a five minute review, 10 minute review. Uh, of all my, you can put all my products in a ten minute review. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so kind of still waiting on that. Hopefully that will come to fruition at some point. But again, it's not a big deal. I, you know, now my, you know, I get enough orders every month anyway, so it's not a big deal. But it, it would be nice, you know. To That's get all right. Those. That's all right. We'll put it out there. We we have yeah. some pull. I think Coop listens <laughs> every every podcast episode. So Coop, <laughs> if you're listening. Reach out, do a five minute or 10 minute video for Darko's stuff. It'll be totally worth it. The video's going to blow up. Boom. There we go. That's all this you is, needed. I know he likes the product. I see him in his videos. Oh, yeah. The anchors sure. are there, you know. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, can, I can understand the financial aspect of it too, though. Like, you know, you're making these videos on these Rit Fit or major Ludi racks or whatever. And he's probably, getting, you know, they're probably making a 10% commission. And you got, you know, hundreds of people that are going to go to Amazon and buy that stuff. Where my stuff's a little bit different. So I, I can kind of understand from a financial aspect why they haven't done one. But it would be cool if they did. Yeah. <laughs> be a lot cooler if you did. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, for first of all, that's news to me that Coop watches this podcast. I hope you're not, you know, white lion on me here, Kyle. Uh, but what? that would be what? awesome if Coop. Uh, I'm just, does I'm manifesting it, man. I'm putting out go. the good juju. Go. Like yeah. this is, this is what's <laughs> happening in my reality. So whether or not you want to be a part of that is up to you. I'm, I'm just in. saying. I'm in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So that that sounds like that was a pretty fateful meeting for you to to have you and pillar the pillar four guys uh, seated outside. So I also. I just want to add to this for anybody who might be listening to this and thinking like, wait a second, there was VIP dinners that people paid for and people got stuck outside eating with spoons. Uh, these <laughs> these are some of the growing pains, right, that we've come to understand. Uh, I think what we learned was two things. Number one, we we have to be more diligent. We meaning like team garage gym experiment, team home gym con in like how we announce it i think that it was like announced across the entire event floor like hey dinner's here jump on the trolley but there wasn't right. anything specific about it. that's the vip dinners only if you paid for them so i think people found their, their their themselves there without realizing that it was like an exclusive group of people that were supposed to be there and then they they didn't really check like wristbands or lanyards to make sure that you should be there. But right. I think the other thing that we learned too was that we're just a bunch of big eaters as well. Like aside <laughs> yeah. from there not <laughs> sure. being enough tables, I think there not being enough tables was obviously a direct result of people being there that shouldn't have been there. But, um, and I can speak for myself, like you're not eating all day, right? You're, you're going yeah. right to the event first thing in the morning. Cause even though I think Doors were at nine, but people were on the floor at seven, like like guests were out there roaming the floor at seven. Um, and you're just there all day. And at least for me, being somebody who knew I had purchased the dinner, it's like I'm just waiting until dinner and I'm going right. to freaking <laughs> scarf down food. Yep. Right. And first I think, form bars and energy drinks on the <laughs> right. floor. Just get yeah. me through to dinner. <laughs> right. That's <Yes>. it. <laughs> yeah. So. So that was a growing pain and something that I know that we, we've learned from and going into year three, you know, that shouldn't hopefully be a problem. But uh, I mean, I know that, I mean, in year one, I think I went back for like thirds on yeah, right. the VIP yeah. dinners, right? And yeah. there was still leftover food. Uh, that was not so much the case, at least at the first dinner uh, this year. So I want to touch too on this lightly, but, you know, we talked about the relationships and stuff. And Kyle, you and I have talked kind of about like jokingly, but also realistically kind of like there's like a magic about home gym con right like yeah. you can't it's really hard to articulate the coolness of being able to be around people that you're talking to on on social media but also just people who share like a passion a hobby right like in uh, something that you're enthusiastic about and just being around those types of people for an entire weekend um but the two of you guys darko and kyle 
you know, we're able to become friends. I think that there's probably a handful of people out there who don't know this. Probably nobody knows this, but there was a small feud between the two of you guys leading into uh, Home Gym Con. And I was kind of friend in the middle, my good friend <laughs> Kyle, my good friend Darko, trying to keep things at bay. But like, Kyle, why don't you lead us on that a little bit? I'm like, right. touch on the feud. We don't have to go into details, but I want to hear a little bit about how you guys came together, became bros, and here we are on this podcast. Beefs are squashed. Right? Yeah. Squash and beefs left and right, man. Yeah. That's that's what we're all about right now. So I'll just say that uh, Darko and I both started off around the same time ish. I think we're yeah. both like kind of kind of scrappy and kind of just like, you know, fucking trying to innovate, trying to watch out for people borrowing ideas and stuff. And I I will fully admit I stepped on his toes and then we sort of um, didn't really see eye to eye for a couple years and we just kind of kind of let it get the best of us and mike all credit goes to mike really like mike has been this great mediator being both of our <laughs> friends and has been saying you know like you guys are, are basically like you guys would be bros if it wasn't for this and and it took uh i don't know it took i was going through a lot of shit in life yeah. in general like in the background that was sort of um getting me all all sorts of uh frustrated and flustered and once that was all done with a sort of the cloud lifted and i'm like dude this guy's making some really awesome stuff and like we would be better as you know bros and working together than you know spending all this time and energy dissing each other and whatever like trolling doing like <laughs> dumb childish stuff so uh home gym con was our our opportunity to like meet in person and bury the hatchet and man like we broke out like we have so much stuff in common it's like yeah silly to yeah. to have gone two years or three years, however long it was like and you know be working against each other rather than working with each other but i'm grateful for mike and for home gym con for you know sort of like bringing us all together yeah i mean it, you know everyone kind of gets hot-headed at times and I, i'm i'm definitely a hot-headed person who's stubborn and um yeah, like, you know, when you really think about it, this community, is, I mean, it's such an awesome community to be a part of. And so when you just allow these kind of silly things to, like, just live, you know, in your head and just not be anything positive, it's all negative. Right. Um, nothing good comes from it, you know. So it's like afterwards, you know, after Home Gym Con, you know, you look back and you're like, uh, yeah, that's three years that, like, you know, of probably what you know would have been conversations talking you know possible collaboration things like that yeah um that we probably missed out on because we were both just acting like dumbasses basically um <laughs> so you know this community works better it, it works better when we're working together um you know and we're supporting each other so you know once you know you kind of get past you know once i at least really kind of got past you know holding this grudge which was stupid just it was just dumb to begin with you know i mean you're you open yourself up to another person that you can you know talk to collaborate share ideas with um you know because sometimes for me at least you know i'm out on an island working in my garage by myself to where i don't have a lot of people to like run ideas by i don't have a you know i don't have a team of people um so it, you know this community works you know the way we're going to get the best equipment out there for everybody is, you know, with a lot of collaboration with people. Um, yeah. So, yeah, for me, it's just, yeah, I, I look back at it as like, I just wasted three years that, you know, we probably, I kind of, you know, we could have been working together, doing something together, you know, coming out with some cool stuff. So uh, I'm very happy for Home Gym Con. Definitely, you know, just get that behind us and let's just move forward. Yeah. yeah, man. And the good news is we're both young spring chickens, man. Like we have <laughs> decades left on this planet to, to work together and collaborate and like do some cool shit and hopefully like set an example like, you know, anybody else who's squabbling in the home gym community. Like it's not worth it. It's not worth the, the stress. It's not worth the, the mental you know the mental space that that's taking up can be used to do something productive and creative instead like yeah just don't even man like it's so much better to to just 
talk through it and and be bros. So I think I think that you know what you you guys resolving your feud being bros now i'm obviously grateful because it was a i don't know it was like an unusual position to be in and it's not about me but i'm just glad that you guys reconciled i remember it was that for after that first night we're like going back to the hotel and i was hoping i was actually like teasing darko like the whole year leading up to home gym con the second one yeah. i was like you guys are gonna hug it out you guys are gonna be bros and darko was like that's never gonna happen you know just like li- living in his bitterness you know but uh but like that first night we're like walking back to the hotel room and kyle you were just like dude like I talked to Darko, like we got right. it all sorted. He's awesome. Yeah. Like we got yeah. so much in common. And I was just, I was so happy for you guys. But segue into, you just talked about how we're better together. Uncomfortable conversation potentially. But Darko, do you think that that same resolution possibility could exist between you and Mario over at Four Six Fitness? For context, for wait, the, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I know I've heard about some of this, but I'm okay. probably in the dark, like the listeners. So let's let's sort of recap, like what's going on. I could go, or Darko can go. I mean, on this yeah. one. So there's a guy named Mario. He owns a company called Four Six Fitness, and you know, for me, you know, it, it's. It's an interesting place to be in now because my pop my my products are popular, you know, and then you start getting people that are inspired by them or people that make copies of them. Um, now, but some companies, you know, they you know they have some respect for me and my brand, um, where they kind of know, and we've seen this happen obviously very recently with PRX, um, and you know, bro with the MMUDA. Um, where you know people you know companies they they make it right um but so this four six fitness company he's you know basically just copied my anchor outright um you know and then when asked about it basically says no i didn't copy it at all it doesn't look anything like it i mean Hmm. and it's it's a strange situation to be in because you know for me like i work my ass off you know i i i legitimately invented a new way to start barbells that no one had. Um, So to have another small business, you know, American based small business, you know, I think he's a veteran, uh, basically knock off my product and have it made and, you know, imported, which, you know, to me is even worse. Um, It's a frustrating, it's a very frustrating experience. And if you look, you know, I generally people will send me his ads or whatever, like, have you seen this? I'm like, I've seen it. Yeah, of course. Um, but I try not to share it just because, like, I don't need to give this guy any visibility more than what he has. I don't need him to, you know, make sales based off, you know, my what essentially is my product design. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing where I think, you know, I actually I think he, I think he's a talented guy. I mean, you know, I've seen his cat's drawings and like they look nice, like some of the stuff looks nice. Um, but I think, you know, when you outright copy my products. And, or, you know, for me, I'm a small business. This is my, this is my job. Uh, I sell gym equipment. So when you have no shame and, you know, copying a product, uh, yeah, I mean, I have, a, I, now, now I do have a problem with that. That like this, I mean, to me, this is a legitimate thing to be upset about. Um, because I mean, I've built my business trying not to copy anybody. You know, I'm trying to make my products at least different enough to where you can't say like, oh, that's like a one-to-one copy. Um, so when, you know, I expect it from, you know, Sidey or uh, Riffit or, you know, any of these other companies. But, uh, you know, when another small American business does that to you, it, I mean, it, it, it just feels wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's just morally wrong. I'll agree um, with you. I'm on the website right now checking his stuff out and, uh, it's I've seen these items before uh, scrolling through the website. It looks like um, there has been inspiration from multiple companies yeah, pulled yeah. into this one. So, yeah, he may be 
talented at CAD drawing, but it looks like he's not very talented at original design. And so, yeah, yeah that sucks, man. It, it does feel kind of slimy and kind of like, hey, if you want to be a part of this community, you kind of have to abide by the rules that we've all agreed upon. Yeah. And that's one of the rules is like, we don't rip each other off. We work together. So, yeah, not cool, yeah. Mario. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, with him, I, you know, I don't I don't know if that one ever is going to uh, result in us having beers together and being cool. Well, I, OK, uh, so let me ask you, know. you, what what would it take? Like if he's he does he does watch the podcast. I'm sure he's going to tune into this one. Um, is there a path forward? Like, is there an action that he could take, whether it's an apology, outright admitting that he copied your design and attempted to, do a, in, in his words, not mine, improve upon it? Um, is it uh, taking it that skew off of his, like, what is it that if there is a path forward for reconciliation to you, or, or is there not one for you at this point? Um, you know, that that's hard to say. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I don't want him selling a copy of my product. Uh, you know, I just... I just morally, I morally, I think it's wrong. Um, mm -hmm. And like, I mean, you see his comments, he seems like he's probably a nice guy. Um, but, you know, when you kind of use your basis, like, oh, well, you know, other people copy other people's products. So like, it's okay to do it. Um, yeah. You know, that I, I it, it's hard for me to respect anybody that takes that stance. Um, just because, you know, it's not like you're, you know, copying rogue where you're not going to put a dent in their you know financials um but for a small business i mean if you start eating away at my sales like that that that's going to be a problem for me um so i can already I, I can already hear the people in the comment section saying you should have gotten a patent no, of it's course. your fault <laughs> for not getting a patent right I, I heard that a bunch too what is your answer to that no, I mean, you know, if, if patents cost $500, I'd have one for every one of my products. Uh, the fact is they cost, you know, I mean, every, anywhere from like 10 to 20 grand. Well, I got six, seven products or whatever. Uh, I'd be out of business. Right. I wouldn't have a business if I had to get a patent on all of them. Yeah. Because all of my, you know, profit basically would have paid for that. And then I wouldn't have a house anymore. I wouldn't have my car. I wouldn't have anything. Um, so, you know, when people say that, it's like, yeah, in an ideal world uh, where it doesn't cost, you know, fifteen grand to get a patent, yeah, that's that would be awesome. I would love to have a patent on my products. I, I, I just, I'd be out of business. Yeah, there would be no money, you know. And real, you know, the point of a business is to make money. Um, and even then, trying to fight it, you know, because you know people make variations. You know, people are, are uh, inspired by your products, um, so. Then you, I mean, then you got to take them to court. You got to hire lawyers. You got to, you know, five, you know, go defend after them. Yeah. yeah. You got to defend these things, you know, like then it's like that 15 grand now is 25 grand, you know? Right. And if it was, you know, say it was rep copying you, rogue copying you, somebody that has deep pockets, well, they can string this thing along until I'm absolutely out of business. Mm -hmm. um, so for these people that say, oh, you should have gotten a patent. Well, you know, I'm sorry. I don't have 15 grand just like chilling you know under my under my mattress uh to go pay for a patent it's it's not the way the world works sometimes but yeah. it's it's easy to just say that because it's like they're sure. not invested in it you know it's not yeah. their money and uh you know everyone likes a deal from amazon you know <laughs> and it's it's typically somebody who has not run a business and has not gone through the patent process that that yeah. gives that advice like they just don't know. They don't know what yeah. they don't know. Yeah. So, no, I, I expect that. It's 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 frustrating, but uh, you know, the problem with these copycat things to me is like, if there's enough of them out there where I'm not making a living anymore, well, I'm not going to do this anymore, and I'm right. not going to develop products anymore. And I think a lot of the products I have developed have made people's home gym experiences better. Um, so then you start to lose out on some of these guys doing these, you know, making these products. Because what's the point if you're going to have 20 people copying your product next month and you're not going to make any money and you just spent six months doing R&D? Right. Um, so, I mean, that's that's another frustrating part of it, to be honest. It's just like they, they didn't have to do any R&D. They just basically saw yours, redrew it, added a couple holes in the middle and, you know, called it the solution. So, 
It is what it is. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like you, you talked about the, the time it goes into R and D and obviously we're talking about the anchor and that being like your first product that you came to market with, but where, like, where did this ability to even design come from? Like, life before Darko lifting, where does this background, like how are you able to design these things? Um, why did you start designing them? Like share a little bit about that story. Um, so I have a background in, you know, I was doing marketing for a software company before I started Darko lifting and I handled all of our like print advertisements, uh, all of our handouts or our sell sheets, you know, all that type of stuff, our website design. And, um, I've been using Photoshop for 22, 24 years, Whoa. probably since about, yeah, okay. 2000, probably about 2000. And I've always liked just creating things. Um, that's just, you know, my, you know, my mom's a painter, my stepdad's a painter. Uh, I've always loved drawing and just, you know, making stuff. So for me, that just kind of came naturally um, from designing, you know, advertisements to you know now designing products um obviously you got to learn you know uh, you know putting something on a sheet with color on it is easy making something that needs to hold weight is a little bit different okay. um but i just took you know that kind of mentality of like okay what do i want you know and like if no one has it how do i get it made or what do i want these things to look like so a lot of my products have come out of necessity you know, like the anchor, for example, the Mars bar is 65 pounds. It sucks to move around. So, you know, I wanted something to hang my bars from the top of my rack, which is, you know, for the most part has been unused space on racks for years and years and years. Um, so, you know, a lot of the designs I make are just things that I really want for my home gym, things that I think make the experience better because the more objectives you have in front of you, to work out, you know, the more excuses you make to not work out. So the easier it is to get set up, you know, or just make it more accessible. Um, I think it just makes a better home gym experience. So that, that's kind of my philosophy on most of my products while adding something new or different, you know, compared to what a lot of other companies are putting out there. I have a question for you. Yeah. The, um, the thing that started our beef, the, um, plate, holder like extra weight holder thing what happened to that because that i still think that's a pretty brilliant idea and i could see it being a, a sellable product um i agree is that ever going to come to market you know i hope so it's one of those products i want to make even if i like generally i want to make money in any product i sell that's you know it's a business like that's one product where i'm like i might be okay breaking even just because that's like the first thing i really really designed mm -hmm. um but the, you know the reality is it, it, it's it's expensive. So with a typical markup, you're looking at you know generally it's like thirty five to forty five percent um, you know profit on something you sell. Unfortunately, for something like that, you know you're looking at having to sell that at a hundred dollars, hundred and twenty dollars. That's a hard proposition, I think, for most people. Can I pitch you an idea? Absolutely. It says a hundred percent original original idea make it out of wood bro like hit up nate at executive fit he's got the cnc machine all you have to do like when i made them there's just cutting dowels and then cut the base dude nate could definitely do it i don't know what your your cost is for making it out of steel but it doesn't have to support a lot of weight um, yeah, yeah. it's just yeah the weights like sit on they could be made of wood it could be 3d printed really like it just needs to keep the weights from falling off anyway bring it to market man i want one no, I mean, I, I want it at some point. I, I, I even thought about making them out of wood myself, just making a really nice wood yeah. finish. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, like an oak or something. That would like be higher yeah, yeah, dude. Oak, you know. Yeah. Because uh, then it definitely gives off like that premium feel. And yeah, yeah it, it's not really weight bearing. It's just kind of like storing the weight on top right. of the plate, which is holding, you know, all of the yeah. actual plates on top. Uh, so no, I've thought about it too, but then it's just, you know, then you got to cut the wood and then you got to sand everything and then you got to stain it. And you know what I mean? It just becomes like one of those things where it's like, for me, you know, I, I kind of have an idea in my head of how much I want to make per hour, you know, yeah. when I'm doing things. So, but you do, you do outsource some of your work, don't you? Yeah. So like all of my steel is cut, okay. you know, from a third party. Um, but I assemble everything. 
you know, out of the garage. Everything gets, yeah. everything comes in. Like even today, I had a pallet come in. And I just basically store everything. So certain things are quick assembly, like anchors. You know, uh, it's like four bolts aside, package ship. You know, yeah. easy peasy. Yeah, yeah. Something like a long e bar. You know, that comes in basically cut steel, where I basically have to go and chamfer all the edges because it's you know it's a sharp edge. Right. Uh, give it that nice rounded feel to it. And then I basically polish all the selector holes, polish the whole bar, assemble, pack and ship. So it just depends what it is, you know, what mm -hmm. product it is. So for something like the change plate thing, which like I love, I think it's I, like I'm still super proud of it. I think it's such, such a cool a good thing, idea, man. Yeah. And um, but it's like okay, well, like if I cut the wood, sand everything, stain it. You know, that's probably what 30, 45 minutes of work somewhere in there. So you got to build that into the cost. Get Nate to do it, man. And he yeah, can do some killer inlays with the, know, but then, the but then epoxy. Gotta, but then you got to pay Nate too, right? Yeah, and then, yeah, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. especially as a you know small business, like you got to factor all these things in. Um, Cause even like right now, like I have the, I have a guy that makes the pads for my threshers, mm -hmm. but you know, I got to pay him. It's, you know, that's a, that's a high cost. And, uh, you know, I still need to package everything. I pre-assemble parts of it. And, but like, you know, all these things, they start adding up, you know, right. just these little increments and all of a sudden you're like, oh man, my profit is really not what I thought it was going to be. Um, so, you know, you kind of got to pick and choose exactly which products are worth really pursuing. Um, you know, like my first product that I've retired is the Voodoo. And it's because- Is it officially just, retired now? Yeah, I'm going to take it off the website here pretty soon. Um, it's just one of those products where it's like I'm super proud of it. It's actually my favorite product I've made, uh, like just utility-wise. But storing it, it doesn't sell a lot because it's, it's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Um, you can only use it on particular pulley systems. And, uh, yeah, no, i got to store the, like six different parts. I got to, you know, I do custom cut cables. So I cut the cables myself, crimp them, everything. Uh, I make this, the little leg roller pads. I make all those by myself. And then you just look at it and you're like, that was not, it's just not worth, you know, the juice isn't worth the squeeze on that one. All right. Yeah. So anyone interested, it's still on the website. You better get it <laughs> while the getting's good. Go buy a Darko Voodoo. Go um, get it now. Give him reason to keep it, keep it as a skew on his yeah. website. So yeah. that, that's that pretty were, cool, man. That's that, yeah. that's it's such a good idea. But now, I mean, now with so many of these other like cable products coming out, it doesn't. I don't know if it really has a a place in the market at the price. So that might actually transition to something without the pulley involved, where it'll be more of just a leg holder foot plate uh, that rotates basically off the upright versus like mm -hmm. off the main brackets of the Voodoo. So that's something I'm looking at, but. So you know, like just, modifying it so that instead of it having to accommodate a cable, it's just like an adjustable like knee holder slash foot plate for yeah. like the existing stuff that's out there, like uh, whether it's an Aries or an Athena or, you know, Fringe has one. Everybody's got, you know, yeah. uh, rack like the, you know, the Adonis, stuff. things like that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, probably going to yeah transition over to something like that, I think, just because, you know, you reduce a little bit of weight because the voodoo, it just it kind of feels heavy in hand at times. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just every product you gotta, you know, you gauge, you know, what, it, what your output is and what you're getting out of it, you know, from a price perspective. And that's where it gets, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's interesting at times because like certain products, if I don't make a ton, but it's super easy to package ship, like that's not a big deal. But if you're spending like a long bar, I spend, you know, close to about an hour, you know, hmm. give or take 10, 15 minutes on every bar. Wow. Hmm. Um, you know, which is why, you know, the cost of that bar is, you know, it's pretty high is, you know, it's probably the most expensive D handle bar on the market, but you know, for the quality that people get, you know, it may, you know, the price makes sense. Yeah. So I'm assuming the anchor is your best selling product. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. Still, to this what, day, yeah. Still number one product by far. Okay. What's your next best selling product? Um, right now it's probably the shorty bar. Shorty Bar okay. still sells a pretty decent amount. Um, and then uh, probably the dock after that one. Okay. And the docks hopefully, you know, kind of expand on the dock in the next couple of months too, a little bit. So good, good. Yeah, that one's sweet. Um, so I want to talk about one that you were kind of forced into 
showing off recently, the new Arrow Light Spotters. Um, and these are interesting to me in particular because you were, you were, I know that you were forced to reveal them because another company uh, showed theirs that are similar in design. And before that, speaking for myself, when, when you would hear these stories, whether it's like, you know, I know that Jim Pin released their holy bar claiming that they had never seen your shorty or longy and they're like identical. And then you could even say like with the PRX thing, even though we have a lot of insight into what happened there, it's like, wait, it's not possible for two of the exact same products to be being developed behind the scenes without them. It's like, there's no way that was my take on it. Like, there's no way, like th this is such a unique idea. There's no way somebody else had the same idea and was working on it at the same time, but I'm wrong because, because yeah. gorilla fitness just released their or version of like their own spotters. That is, has some very similar features to your soon coming arrow light spotters. Um, but tell us a little bit about those. Like I'm intrigued. Yeah. You know, so, I started working on a spotter design like two years ago. Um, but again, it's one of those things where if I don't really need it for my gym, it, it doesn't get a lot of attention. So I started working on them two years ago and just never really fully fleshed them out because I didn't need them. Like I, I had a full power rack. I use safety straps, you know, now, you know, as a few months ago, you know, I got the Rhino, my rack got a lot bigger, you know, switched to more of a half rack type setup. Like, man, really got to use spotters now man my rogue spotters are i mean they're they're great i'm sure they'll save my life if i really need them to on a you know thousand pound drop but man moving those things sucks it's uh just not something i want to do uh you know, you know, goes, titans yeah. are the same i think you know most companies spotters are basically like that um so again you know it's just one of those products where like i found like i i could probably use you know a lighter spotter something that's easier to move, something that's easy to store. Um, so, yeah, you know, I they're still in testing. I, I was really hoping to not show them this year, or really maybe not till the end of this year. Um, but when Gorilla Fitness showed theirs and the ability for it to basically be a flip-down spotter, I'm like, oh, man, no, I, got, I, like, I have to show them because, like, I don't want to run into that risk where it's like, oh, you copied, you know, Gorilla I Fitness. I did it first. It was me. Yeah, it was right. me. And, uh, you know, I don't follow them on Instagram. They don't follow me on Instagram. They never yeah. showed theirs. I never showed mine outside of, you know, seven or eight people on Discord, I think. Um, so it wasn't, you know, it was just one of those things where, like, we both had the same idea. Uh, they're probably a little bit further ahead than I am on mine, but, but you know, mine's a little bit different because it's not, it's not traditional tubing. Um, you know, and the point of that is to make them super light, you know, that's why they're called the arrow lights and they're basically, you know, hollow, um, down yeah. the middle. So, uh, you know, I just had another round of prototypes come in today. So I'm hoping to assemble those, put them through some more oh. testing and, uh, yeah, you know, it was just, it was, it was just random, you know, random luck that, uh, bad luck. I don't know, whatever it was, yeah. uh, that they, you know, had there. So, Cause I don't even think they have them on their website or anything yet. Like, I don't think, have you seen these things, Kyle? Yeah. Well, I saw the, the ones that Darko posted. I haven't seen the gorilla fitness ones. Okay. So you this saw, is still like, more traditional tubing, but like yeah. it yeah. still has the flip down feature, which yeah, is yeah. one of the main That's selling wild. points. So I, it just goes to show that like when you have a lot of people that are that are concentrating on the same issues that we run into that like yeah it is it is totally plausible that people can come up with the same idea in different places i had an example of that uh just happen uh this week where something that i pitched to abmat like in the fall and then things happen, changes happen within Abmat, and then it went to another company, then it went to another company. Um, now Fringe is working on it, but it's taking like forever for it to come out. I haven't posted about it, I haven't talked about it, um, but I have people pitching me ideas all the time like through my website, and I had somebody pitch me that exact idea, and I immediately was like, bro, this is a great idea. Just to let you know, I'm already working on it, blah, 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 blah. Like, I sent him pictures. I was like, I promise I didn't steal the idea from you. Ours are a little bit different, but it's it's very similar yeah. anyway. Yeah, and I mean, it just happens. You get a lot of people that are sort of like tinkering and trying to solve problems in the gym. And there's only a finite way you can solve these problems. So 
Yeah, it's bound to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's normal. Especially, I mean, especially now, you got more people than ever probably tinkering away in their garage, trying to, you know, come up with ideas. Um, so, yeah, it, it, you know, uh, unfortunately, it just happened this time to me. But, yeah, I, you know, it's fine. I mean, I can't be mad at them or anybody. It's just we both thought of a cool idea and just happened to be at the same time. Um, but, you know, I again, I don't. They're a Canadian company. Uh, I don't worry too much about them. So, what uh, what happened with that? Uh, the whole rep thing with the with the rolling dumbbell rack. Oh the, yeah, uh, the adjustable dumbbell stand. Uh, yeah, you know, you, so you like that was kind of funny. And honestly, like I was kind of just poking fun at the fact that they showed that CAD design. I'm like, that looks pretty pretty similar, you know, to <laughs> yeah. my thing. And uh, I think I'd actually messaged Mike, uh, or Mike messaged me, he was like, hey, you see that thing? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's possible, you know, that they've been working on it. And he's like, no way, dude. I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I was I like, get... they've only got a cat <laughs> of it. <laughs> so I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I wasn't really going to, you know, hammer him or, you know, do anything like that. It was more just like kind of tongue in cheek, like, Ryan, dude, where's my, where's my check, dude? Mm -hmm. And, um, so, I mean, you know, whether, you know, it's still possible they could have been working on that, you know, ahead of time before my, I showed mine. But, you know, possibly just to avoid any controversy, you know, they wanted to get ahead of it. And, you know, basically they're like, oh, yeah, if we, you know, if we do go with this cart, you know, we're going to send you a full set of weapons. We're going to send you the cart, whatever color you want. So, yeah, you know, I mean, that worked out because, like, I, I, I'm not going to sell a dumbbell stand. Like, I don't care. Right. Like, I'm never going to ship. I'm never going to make that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if I can get a free pair of weapons out of it. Then Sweet, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> stay away from the anchor. Um, just yeah. a funny little side note. I, I reposted your story on that day when that happened. And I, I was like, you know, good on rep for making it right. And they responded to my story to me saying it's in our DNA, which yeah. I thought was really cool. And like, I don't know, man, like whether they meant to do it or not, whether they forgot to reach out to you ahead of time or not, like doing the right thing immediately yeah. was was like the right route to go rather than like try to fight it or deny it. Like whatever it's better to just be on the safe side and what's it going to cost them to like send oh, yeah. you a pair of weapons it's like chump change for them but it it shows that they care and they're listening and they're willing to do the right thing oh yeah no i mean like I, i've chatted with brian a number of times on discord and you know i met adam over at home gym con no they're super cool guys you know mm -hmm. like they're super nice uh uh even you know and like I have a hard time separating like being a home gym owner versus being a home gym manufacturer. Yeah. So, you know, there are times where I'm chatting on discord about something I don't like, and it probably feels like I'm really shitting on a company when I, when <laughs> I, 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 I'm not really trying to, and rep rep sometimes gets the brunt of that. Um, because you know, for me, like reps up and like, they're not up and coming. Like they're, they're established. Like they yeah, are either. one of the best brands yeah. in home gym stuff, making freaking awesome stuff. So when you see some of their stuff that they're still selling that they designed five years ago or just white labeled five years ago and they're still selling it, it's like, like, what are you doing? Like, you yeah. know, and I know they're working through and they have a whole team of engineers and they're re and he, Ryan's already confirmed that they're working on a bunch of new products that I've kind of shit on in the past. Um, so for them to even like after me doing that type of stuff to still go ahead and like offer to send me the weapons, I thought was really cool um, because I have a lot of respect for them. Like some of this, like they're chain like, I don't think Rogue counters as fast and as aggressively on pricing as they did without the Aries coming out. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely not. You know, so I think it's better for all of us that Rogue has had to sharpen their pencil yeah. uh, on their pricing, 100%. Um, and like with the rep and the, the, the dumbbell cart, like it's like I don't even know if I would call it the right thing to do. Not that it wasn't, but it was like, just a cool thing for yeah. them to do, you know, like, um, we've the, the walk-in rolling dumbbell cart has been around forever. Like Bowflex designed one yeah. back when they, you know, were real big with their select techs and stuff. You obviously did it in a cooler way by repurposing uh three by three, one inch hole cross members, right? It looks cooler. It's more yeah. aesthetically pleasing. You can use it for attachments and stuff, but it was just a cool thing for them to do 
to just makes them look fantastic, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Like for everybody who saw that, um, yeah, very, very, very cool thing for them to do. Uh, I mean, you'll and you'll probably get your rep in sometime in 2026, but you know, from what I hear, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it's cool them, you know, like I'm stoked, you know, they're probably happy, you know, because like, I mean, not that I have like this massive following, but I have like a pretty decent amount of like hardcore followers of mine that. Yeah. come to me for advice on equipment a lot and um you know so and i've been saying it since home gym con i'm like the revens are it like if you want adjustable dumbbells and you want the best yeah like these are it like there's not there's nothing even close to it yeah. um so to even have just more you know obviously every, i think everyone's gonna say that but you know not everyone has you know a, i mean i'm i'm still i'm i only have seven thousand dollars not a lot but it's it's i'm working on it um <laughs> You got to go back to your comedy reels, man. Got to grow the audience. I would like to. I'm hoping now kids are back in school, you know, kind of get back to a regular schedule on my uh, order fulfilling that I can start doing some more goofy stuff. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, Darko, before he made gym equipment, he d- you had some pretty... I don't know if yeah. we call them viral. They were viral in the space. Like, you had some reels that, like, really popped off in the early days. And I know that when we, you and I were both like up and coming content creators, I was like, this guy, freaking Darko, he's so (laughs) naturally funny. Like he's just doing this stuff that we all think is funny, but he's able to capture it in a reel. And, uh, like you had that one where you just like reversed you falling into bed type of thing with the barbell and stuff. That one just like took off. Right. Yeah. Uh, it might have like 2 million views on it or something. Yeah, bro. Uh, but no, for a while, man, they were averaging like probably like forty to fifty thousand views on like every reel wow. I did. So like Damn, they were doing yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Um, I would like to get back to it. I like doing that type of stuff, you know, because yeah. like you know, selling gym stuff's awesome. I love you know, I love shipping stuff out. I love people posting it, seeing pictures of everything. Um, but yeah, you know, even like those silly posts, you know, you just you add a smile to you know forty thousand people a day. You know, and sometimes like that's enough. You know, like I like that aspect of it. Um, and like, it's not like, I, you know, like I think Facebook would send me like a hundred bucks a month or something. So it obviously wasn't for the money. Um, but, you know, it's cool. I think, you know, like we have a cool community and like you can bring some joy to it with just these silly reels that have to do with home gym stuff. Like, I think it's cool. It's a, like, it's a good feeling to do. Yeah. I mean, Kyle has to uh, weigh vintage plates to get that kind of engagement. That's right, his- man. <laughs> I keep doing. I'll keep. I'll keep milking that cow until it dries up. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. All right, oh, so yeah. time for me to an- got- ask some questions, yeah, Mike. You've go, been hogging man. this whole podcast. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, Darko. Can you let us in on uh, some juicy details? What kind of stuff do you have coming next? Can you tease or or outright just tell us what stuff you're working on? Um, yeah, you know, right now, uh, main ones up are going to be the spotter arms. Um, I think yep. that's the big one. Mainly, you know, mainly because I I just want them. I want them for my own gym. So yeah, that, that's kind of gets pushed to the forefront. Curious what the uh, what's the price point you're shooting for on those? Uh, shoot, shooting for between four hundred and four twenty five shipped. Okay. Um, you know, so shipping on those things is probably gonna you know it's probably gonna be thirty forty dollars around there. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, like real estate cost is yeah like three seventy five to four hundred. Um, so that's what I'm shooting for right now. But we'll, cool. you know, we'll see, and it just depends on volume. You know. Yeah. Um, so spotters are probably number one. A um, few other lingering things that I need to really invest some time in are a 5 eighths version of the Thrasher. Um, that's probably the most requested item I get. Uh, new dock attachments. So um, I already have the dock itself in, So, but it's a double-sided dock, mm-hmm. right? So imagine on a six-post rack, you put your dock on that middle upright. You have your bars in your main lifting section. On the back section, I'm going to make attachments for chains, bands things like that that kind of hang in that storage section of your rack nice um so that should be coming out soon uh the goal for home gym con 2025 are monoliths um Ooh. kind of a different concept for monoliths that i oh, want to exciting. start testing out um that kind of 
alleviate some of the issues that I, I personally see where most people don't, you know, you buy monoliths and you can't use them for squats because the the travel on them is two two inches, two and a half inches from where you unrack to re-rack. Now, unless you have perfect squat form, which I definitely do not, um, you're going to come up and smash into the bottom of your monolith. So uh, that's one of those things that I kind of have an idea of how to fix that. Um, and uh, actually, right, I mean, soon, actually, uh, about three days, uh, mini racks. Mini racks are coming. Oh, nice. <laughs> the mini uh, racks. So I've been, I've been having my printers print basically you know, platefuls of mini J cups and mini spotter arms and mini weight horns. And, uh, Oh, since we're on the topic, I just have to publicly apologize to Kurt Locker. He thought I was throwing shade at him in the last episode when I, I called out Mike for not supporting my buddy Darko. And Kurt was like, what man? Like Mike can't support me. I, we're all we're all bros, man. It's all good. That also, me. Kurt was just razzing me, but Kurt, I love you. Just wanted I still to say need that. To buy him. A, oh yeah. Buy him a coffee. There you go. That's, that's yeah. you, you know, Kurt, Kurt reached out to me right after uh, I posted my thing. He's like, "Hey, I've been working on this thing." I'm like, "Dude, that's awesome!" Like, I, you know, another you, example of what we were just talking about. Yeah, like right. he's like, "Oh, I'm probably gonna share the files on printables." I'm like, "That's awesome, man!" Like, you know, if someone has a 3D printer, then sweet, you right know. Here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, like, I think it's cool, like, but, like, for me, like, I, you know, I took the time to, de you know, design all of mine from scratch, uh, mine's going to be, like, it, 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 it's building a power rack, so it has yeah. many, many bolts and many washers and many nuts, and I'm going to basically make little mini wrenches, <laughs> and uh, so it'll be the whole experience of How building. tall is it, like, full, what's the, what's the full height? Um, so it's an eighth scale. Uh, okay. so, a, so I base it off a 90 inch rack. So it's probably like 10 and a quarter inches. Okay. Tall. Are your, are your uprights when you're printing them? Are they at like max width on your print plate? Oh, I got to print diagonally. Da yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah you're at yeah. least 10 inches. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, you know, and then. With that, you know, I've been reaching out to a few smaller companies like, hey, you know, I'm making these things. Is it cool if I include, you know, some of your products? Um, so like the Massonomics Drink Spotter, that will come in in every single kit that gets sold. Nice. Um, in every one? So yeah. just like a base four post power rack will come yep. with a, a Massonomics, a mini, yeah. a, a mini, mini, mini drink spotter. Drink yeah. spotter. <laughs> uh, so cool. Uh, we're doing uh, Black Widow VHS bar oh, and uh, Mutant Metals UDA. Dude, that's so cool. Some other that I'm waiting to hear back from. That's so, so cool. Did, did any of them try to hit you up for some licensing on that? No, you know, you I like... asked them like, "Hey, you know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna make these things, you know, like it'll just get more eyes on for your thing. Um, like, is that cool? You know, because like realistically, if they wanted royalties, it's like if I'm selling something for like, you know, sixty, seventy bucks, and it's one part of fifty, it's like, are, do you really want me to send you a dollar? every time i sell one of these things a nickel like you're gonna get a 40 dollar, you know a 30 dollar check every month like do you really because like at that point i'm like i, I would the admin work i'm like i'm not even i wouldn't even do it then you know what i mean right um so it's not like that it, it doesn't add a ton of like cost to the product but it's just a cool thing to where it's like if someone didn't know those things existed and they get this they're gonna be like wait what is you know what is that thing yeah you know and i'm gonna link to obviously to all the products on the page you know give, you know give a big thanks and so you know for you know these companies allowing me to do it because like to me it's just like a cool thing you know it's like for us home gym hobbyists you know yeah uh, i mean i've got i've probably got more dms about that thing than any other post i've done on instagram it, it feels really them. dorky but i'm like super excited this yeah. is one of those <laughs> things that like you never knew you wanted until you saw it and then it's like oh yeah of course i want a mini version of everything i have in yeah. real life it's ridiculous but it's so cool yeah uh so well, yeah can... Go cool. ahead, Darko. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so the plant, you know, is basically there's going to be squat racks, there's going to be half racks, four post racks, six post racks. Uh, you'll be able to order the color of your uprights, color of your cross members, uh, either like a like a chrome plate set or just like a you know black you know plate set. So there's going to be a lot of customization features to where you can really kind of get it to look you know like your home gym. Um, so that's uh, it's just one of those things that's neat. And I'm going to use it just for instead of like 
just staying up till two in the morning, rearranging my rack and hoping it comes out cool. I'm basically going to just rearrange like this little mini rack and like uh, figure out like, how did this really work? How does it look in this setting? Um, because I, I probably wouldn't have done my Rhino rack the way I did it. You know, once I built it, I'm like, dude, this thing is huge, dude. So like, big, it, man. So like, it probably would have saved me a bit of a headache. There. It's almost like <laughs> a, like a real life Zeus gym builder. Like instead yeah. of putting this stuff together on your computer, you just build it in real life. Yeah. I like yeah, it, I man. That's what Kurt had said, I think, was one of the kind of the genesis or one of the like influences of him wanting to do it was in helping people to figure out how they wanted to set up their own gyms. Because, like, Zeus only goes so far. There, right. You kind of, if you could have that kinesthetic experience where it's, like, in front of you, you can have a much better idea of, like, how things are going to, to work. Do you think you'll, Darko, do you think you'll be able to... Uh, have a rhino add-on in there? You know, so that's one of those things where it's like smaller companies <laughs> are a lot easier to push things through <laughs> right. because it's like, like you know, like with Massonomics, I'm like, I just messaged uh, Tanner. I was like, hey, like, is this cool? He's like, I love it. Absolutely. I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, yeah. You know, I've had another big company that was interested and I'm like, hey, you know, I'll do it. Like, if you can get me the, the sign-off to do it, like, absolutely. He's like, all right, let me find out. And like, you know, I haven't heard from them for like five days or six days, okay. you know, so it's like, you know, they probably have to go, you know, to the legal department and, yeah. you know, and everything. So it's like bigger company, you know, and then especially with Rogue, uh, I don't want them to be mad at me at all. Right. No. Yeah. You know, because no, uh, no. like even for them, you know, if I ask them, it's, you know, you're going to have to go through legal and you're going to, you know, they, you know, companies like that probably want royalties and stuff like that where it's like at that point it's like i'll make something that looks like a belt squat um that doesn't you know step on anybody's toes because i i, I don't want to get on the bad side of some of these bigger companies that can yeah either, you know with rogue cut me off or other companies sue me into oblivion so yeah hey i i'm curious we haven't talked you and i haven't talked since home gym con how is the whole rogue thing going for you like i remember we were talking about it and you know you sort of didn't know what to expect and you were ramping up like how have you been doing with the boost in volume or are you seeing a boost in sales volume uh you know it's not like a huge it's not like game changing or anything like that mm -hmm. um because like as of right now they're only selling the shorty e bar and the long e bar oh, um, okay now, I think those will start to see a boost as, you know, as I ship product out to their customers and, you know, hopefully they leave more reviews on those product listings on the Rogue website. Because as of right now, like, I think there's a review from Mike. Thank you. And uh, someone else. <laughs> and But, like, the Longy Bar has no reviews, uh -huh. right? Now, if they went through my website, they would see, you know, there's a lot of reviews for both of these products. So, like, it's not, like, it's always nice, you know, I'll more sales, the better. I'll, you know, always, always take some sales. Um, but it, you know, without, without the anchor in there, cause like the anchor is still my number one product I sell. And I would think if they sold it, then that number would also jump up dramatically. Um, yeah. cause for someone buying a rack, you know, like a lot of people, like they only go to the rogue website and buy stuff, right. or the rev yeah. website and buy stuff. So, you know, outside of that, you know, they don't, if it's not from them, people don't buy it. And, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I get it, but I see it, you know, I see tons of gyms, like it is, you know, floor to ceiling rogue. And right. then I get, unless it says rogue or it's sold by rogue, they don't buy it. Yeah. Um, so, but no, I mean, it's going, it's going well. Uh, you know, um, you know, it's just, yeah, it's nothing where it's like, Oh, well now I can, you know, now I got to hire somebody, you know, it's nothing right. like, that crazy but it, did rogue it's, make you sign any sort of exclusivity with them that you, like you couldn't sell your stuff in another brand's shop or whatever like if rep wanted to carry your stuff would that be an issue uh no there's nothing like okay. there's no agreement like that um that's cool so you know but even like so like titan has reached out about manufacturing the anchor uh, uh -huh. so there wouldn't have been any uh issue with that i don't think okay. with rogue I mean, ideally, I would, you know, like it if Rogue just made the ink. Sure. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. uh, that would be a win situation for me. You know what I'm curious about? And this is kind of relevant for me. 
because I'm always, you know, like looking at things that I want to buy and I'm at a point where I'm, I'm buying smaller things. Right. And Rogue has, as we talked about, they've really ramped up their free shipping items, right? Like a lot of their new functional trainers, their, that new like leg roller, they're, I think the leg roller, that's where I'm going with this. I think it's a three ships free item. So okay. some items they're now putting as free shipping and others are still kind of being categorized as the three ships free, which is frustrating for me as a consumer. Like I can't buy two, three ships free items and one free shipping item and then still get the three ships mm -hmm. free. Like it, yeah. it does legitimately have to be three items that are three ships free. But if, if there are other consumers out there like me, I go into just their three ships free items and then sort by price. And I'm like, yeah. what cheap thing do yeah. I need to get right. to get my free shipping? And most of the time, it doesn't make sense. Like, I'm, well, I'll be spending 30 bucks when if I just paid shipping, it would be 15. But I'd be curious to know, like, if they ever did do the anchor, would, would it make more sense for it to be like a three ships free item? Because... A lot of, in my opinion, a lot of the three ships free stuff isn't like practical. It doesn't necessarily solve a problem. Whereas the anchor is like, oh, for sure, sure. Like I want, I want that. So let me find two other things, or maybe they're looking for two other things, and the anchor pops up in there. I don't have any answers, but that's just been something that I've been in my mind, just wondering, like, what kind of thought process goes into? Is it going to be free shipping, charge shipping, or we'll mark this as a three ships free item yeah. like i don't know so like for my products um if yeah. you buy it on the rogue website it's free shipping right um so basically like because like so i fulfill the rogue gets an order they basically send me a po i fulfill it i ship it out on their account um so you know but like that was based on like the like the wholesale pricing so the wholesale pricing was either you know with me shipping it or if you guys want to ship it on your own you know or at least on your account uh, so, like, if it was an anchor situation where, like, I'm still fulfilling it, you know, then it would probably just be a free shipping item on your sure. website instead of, yeah. uh, you know, three ships free or whatever. So, I don't, I yeah, I mean, I unfortunately don't, I don't have a lot of insight into yeah. what Rogue decides on what is free shipping or three ships free. Um, but I just know my products because they want to keep the pricing the same as what's listed on, you know, my website at the moment. So do you include one of your Darko thank you cards on the rogue orders? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, cool. yeah, no, I had to reach out to them like, Hey, is that so cool if I see that or not? I'm not sure. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Do you uh, not want to be known as a drop shipper uh, here? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, but, yeah no, they said, like, that's that's no issue at all. So that was cool. You mentioned the VHS bar, which is a, a piece that I'm super curious about. What are your, I don't know if we call them first impressions at this point, or can you give us, like, your thoughts or a review on the Black Widow VHS bar? It seems to be gaining in popularity in the community. Yeah, I mean, I really like it. You know, I'm a big, you know, bench press, uh, overhead press. You know, those are like my two probably big lifts that I do and kind of and have gotten up to pretty heavy weights on. Um, you know, but the thing with overhead press with a normal barbell is you're always ducking your head. And, you know, for me, I'm just because I'm an idiot. I always have my hat on, you know. So the first rep of every overhead press is me, you know, smashing my hat off behind me. Um, so the VHS, it's, I mean, it's just super nice for overhead press. And I, I'm more of a neutral grip guy. You know, that's why I really okay. like my Cadillac bar also. Um, I just feel like with, you know, straight wrists, it just adds a little bit of, you know, just pain to like my wrists and my elbows. Um, so for over, like if I didn't overhead press, I, I don't think I would have gotten a VHS bar. But for me, like overhead press is probably my second favorite lift. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've also found a lot of other uses for it, uh, you know, as far as seal rows. So for like seal rows, it works great with the thresher because the thresher mm -hmm. sits up a little bit higher on the spotter arm anyway. So you really need something with that camber. I mean, even more aggressive than a standard camber, um, which the VHS just provides. And it's just, it's super nice too. Like when I got it, I was like, holy shit, like this is a really nice bar. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the only things I would probably change if I could, uh, I mean, because it's a fat grip, it's a two-inch grip bar. Um, and, like, I, I don't, I've never even, I never even owned an axle bar before, so it's definitely a bit of an eye-opener on how, you know, girthy the handles were. Um, yeah. So, that, that's one thing I need to get used to. But if it was, like, one and a half inches, 1.75 inches, like, I think that'd probably be very, you know, 
optimal for for most home gym users. Um, but I'm just I'm like if, I'm gonna get used to it. If you had to pick one or the other, the Cadillac or the VHS for a bench press accessory, which would you choose? Uh, probably still my Cadillac bar. Um, okay. I just like where the grips actually are. Yeah. Um, you know, so like for the VHS bar, it's kind of like a narrow or a wide grip only. Um, where for mostly when I use the Cadillac, I use those middle grips. The middle ones, yep. So that 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 would probably be the only for a bench, you know, a bench exclusive accessory. Uh, I'd still probably roll with the Caddy. Same question for overhead press. Uh oh, VHS. Yeah, okay. like I, I, I honestly have never even liked using my caddy for overhead press. It's always felt that thing will chop off. your nose right yeah. off. Yeah, because you kind of got to tilt the bar a little <laughs> it's bit. Sharp you know? too. They yeah, don't, they don't bro. cam for the edges on that. No, one. exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, so no, VHS hundred percent on that one. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. Darko, if you could collaborate with any company. What would it be? Who? So fuck, I messed that up. Darko, if you could collaborate with any company, who would it be? You know, at at this moment, um, I think it would be Dialed Motion. Mm. Oh, that like, would be a and I, collaboration. And like, you know, I got my retractor, so I set up my kind of slick kind of cable setup, and I already ordered another retractor. That, you know, that'll be here in like January. So or smart, so nice, and, yeah. Uh, I, I just think like that you just that retractor alone is just such a cool idea and it's so yeah. smart yeah. um where like i'm now starting starting to like rethink parts of my gym a little bit because so like i have a leg extension like curl selectorized machine where i'm like you know so i'm building out that i'm going to build out the second cable setup right so i'm like man i could probably like shrink down my leg extension if i just take off the weight stack and basically hook up the um What's the round thing? You just built one, Kyle. What's that thing called? Oh, the, the cam. Yeah, oh, the cam. Yes, yes. You know, basically, I'll just take the cable on the cam and just hook it up to my new cable setup. You know, that way it reduces the footprint, makes it a lot lighter to where I can probably yeah. put my leg extension on casters and kind of just move that thing around. Because uh, nice. obviously with a weight sack, I'm not going to do that. But yeah. you know, if it's lighter, if it's 220 pounds lighter, and I can still hook it up to my weight stack, um, because like that cable, the down motion cable is 19 feet long. I mean, you can like, yeah, you can run that thing all the way across your damn room That's and hook awesome. it up to a few different, you know, uh, selectorized machines that don't have weight stacks on them. Yeah. Save a ton of room. Um, you know what I mean? So, like, I if I was going to collaborate with somebody, it'd be them. I just think what they're like, their system is it's one, it's super nice. Like everything they've made, like seen at home gym con, mm-hmm. super super nice, super cool guys. Um, you know, and because like I don't know, collaborating with the big companies, you, you know, I, I'm not super interested in it just because there's so many like hoops you got to jump through. More than likely, as far as like their engineering team, their marketing team, you know, where it's like you know, I'd much rather collaborate with a small company. But down motion, just because like the cable, you know, I'm, I mean, cable systems now are like you got to have one at this point on your rack right. or something. Yeah, and I just think what they're doing is like it's just so cool that like if there was a company you know those two guys they'd probably be the ones i love to collaborate with on something it's cool man that's a good answer what about you mike who's gonna be your number one collaboration pick i put you on the spot you didn't even know this was coming i did not know this was coming <laughs> well you got um, you got five seconds here we go i'm just gonna say fringe sports because uh, i like peter yeah i think he's a cool guy um You've collaborated with them and have had nothing but good things to say. And, uh, yeah, that's that's on the spot, but I think that's going to be my answer. Um, I also wanted to just, like, reiterate on the dialed motion thing. I will say that, like, going into Home Gym Con, I knew they were going to be there. But I also – I had, like, my own personal thoughts about their product. I just – before I had seen it in person, I just thought, like, man, because they, they were releasing in batches and, you know, they were coming to market super late, you know, when, when all these other um, built-in functional trainers were coming to the space. But two things, like seeing the design and the finish on their products in person completely wowed me. Uh, but then to your point, uh, Darko, the retractor is super impressive. Like the way that that functions and you obviously kind of figured out something that I didn't, but I was for the, from a belt squat reason, right. The, which is how they let us, uh, 
test it, Kyle, at, mm -hmm. at home gym con. Yeah. Um, so that you can, it could just keep adjusting to, and you didn't have to start with the load at the bottom. You yeah. can start with it at the top. Fantastic design. I've even wanted, so you know, they've got that Beyond Power Voltra, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. they don't have that as a setting yet in there where you can start with the cable extended oh. and then have okay. the load like kick in yeah. on your way down. Uh, maybe it's something to do with the hardware that, that, that won't allow them to do that. Or maybe it's just a firmware update away, but that feature is super cool. And so Darko, are you thinking you're going to go two sided functional trainer? Is that why you're getting the second retractor? You know, I was, I was going to originally, but I'm okay. like, man, you know, for flies, it's still too narrow. It is uh, too narrow. Yes. So I'm basically yeah. going to put one. Uh, I mean, you kind of know how my gym is set up. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to set one on the wall by my TV. That way they're kind of like about 70, you know, 80 inches apart. Oh, uh, I see. So you're still going to do it for flies, but you're just not going to have it off the two front uprights. Yeah. So I'm basically going to build gonna... like a lat pull down machine, right? So like imagine like the Adonis or whatever, uh, but yeah. I'm going to do basically a 16 inch wide like lat pull down, but that has the functional column cable because of the dial motion retractor. Um, but that way, you know, I'll have two pulley setups um, that both function the same, but then you get like the nice stretch on the flies, like, you know, like a normal you know, crossover machine. So like off your back uprights, one of them will be and one will still be off the front. Is that what it's going to be? No. So one so will like, be on like that front right upright I have as yeah. it is now. The other one yeah. will be like across the room. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cause I was thinking like even using the rear post, like where that you, cause you did go with post behind your Rhino yeah. tower, right? That would be about 60-ish inches if you went that way. I don't know how you'd get the stack in there. But anyway, I haven't thought through this enough. But that would even be interesting to go flies off of, like, the left or right side of, yeah, your, oh, yeah, yeah. of your rack. That's no, that, that would definitely be possible. Um, yeah. But, yeah, for me, I just, you know, I'm going to put it on the other. Because I wanted to put it by my leg machine. Yeah. That way I can remove oh, that stack. Future proof hook, it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and just hook that thing right up to my leg machine when I want to use, you know, do extensions or curls. I uh, like um, it. And I can push my machine like right up against the wall now. So it just, you know, yeah. every inch makes a difference in the gym. Yeah. That's um, what she said. But yeah, no, that retract. Yeah, I mean, do I started pulling that thing out just to see how far it would go. Man, I got to the front of my garage, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Do you have you have a retractor, Kyle? Don't you? Yep, I do. It is sitting on the ground right now, not not being used because I'm a mid gym move. But yeah, I do. Maybe there's a collaboration between Darko, Kaizen, and Dialed Motion because you've got a lot of attention on the cam, Kyle, mm -hmm. that you've been teasing out for your generic plate loaded leg extension. Yeah. Darko could whip up a design on that cam that would function with basically any leg extension. And then dialed motion would just have to include a retractor oh, with any of those yeah. purchases. Maybe there's a partnership. That Maybe sounds, there's some collaboration. Sounds promising. Yeah. Who knows? I, mean, I know they're working now. Like, you know, after I did the weight stack version, like, I think they got a lot of DMs. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, even me, I've had a number of people that ordered them basically to mimic what I set up at my gym. All of a sudden, rogue, rogue slingers start selling again. Know, like, right? What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> this is nobody liked uh, this product. <laughs> no, I mean, like for me, like I think, I mean, to have a cable, I mean, granted, that's a one to one ratio, which, you know, yeah. some people don't like. But, you know, I set mine up to where it's like if I want to do 10 pounds, I can do 10 pounds on it, which is, you know, I'm never going to do anything less than 10 pounds. Did um, you know this, Kyle, that he got all weird with his plate? his uh his oh, selectorized yeah. plates no i need like, to see that what is what is, how do what do your plate weights go they're like so the unorthodox first, yeah the first selection uh with like because you got to have this you know add the selector rod weight you got to add the cable retractor weight and then you mm -hmm. know you gotta have your top plate so i basically added a two and a half pound top plate so with my selector rod and the retractor it's uh, 10 pounds and then after uh, that it's a it's a five pound plate to get up to 15 pounds and then it you know does 10 pound jumps up to like yeah. 185 and then i put two 20 pound plates at the bottom Man. um 
That's so smart. That I, why don't why don't companies do that? That's <laughs> how it should be. Like, Super smart. Like that fringe sport, Dane. Like I think if they did that, that would have been a little bit better. Just because, like, I think their starting weight is like twenty pounds or something. I haven't measured there. it. Yeah, it is pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So if you can get that down to ten pounds, like, and then if you have an attachment that weighs a couple of pounds, like, it's almost you know like a five pound pull on certain things. Yeah. Yeah, um, that would be a game changer. So. But no, Dot Mush, they're working on it. I know because they were asking me where to get weight stacks and, you know, so they're they're working on some versions of it. I'm like, dude, if you guys made, like, either a pulley system like the Slinger or, you know, whatever, like, like you'll sell a lot of them. Yeah. Like, without a Heck doubt. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll see. I agree. Kyle, you got anything else? Uh, going on an hour and a half, man. This I is know. like the length of a movie. This has been <laughs> this has been amazing. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm glad to chat. Glad to catch up again. Um, yeah. It's been really fun just picking your brain and like you are uniquely suited um, in a way that like not a lot of our gym home gym friends you know have like a relationship with rogue and are a manufacturer and are home gym enthusiasts like you your, your venn diagram covers yeah. all those so it's really interesting to like hear your perspective and hear you geek out on equipment and then like share the inside story for you know some of your relationships so i appreciate you coming on man no uh thanks for having me uh no it's like it's we have such a cool community uh, like, I'm so happy, you know, me and you, we squashed our little beef there. Um, because, yeah, like, you know, I think we all want the best equipment, you know, and the way we get that is by a lot of us either working together, collaborating on ideas, sharing ideas. Uh, and, yeah, like, I mean, I still I still think of myself as a home gym owner first. Yeah. And a home gym manufacturer second. And sometimes that gets me in trouble. But, uh, you know, I, I like to share what I think on things and whether it's good or bad. Probably need yeah. it bring that in a bit though (laughs) maybe maybe not i think that that authenticity has is a big part of why you have the community support that you do um as for six fitness has experienced in the discord uh kyle if you aren't familiar four six fitness fairly regularly at least recently gets um what would we call this we would call this like um Trolled. Trolled, oh, yeah. is that appropriate? Yeah. Trolled oh, yeah. in the home gym Discord. Um, yeah, so I don't envy him for having to deal with that. But uh, and but that anyway, that's I think that that is a, you know, you have a loyal fan base, right? Because yeah. you've been authentic, you've been accessible, um, and you were. You were a home gym owner first, right? Just trying to solve problems, and you had the balls to start a company, <laughs> and it's gone well for you. So congratulations, man. I'm yeah, proud man. for you. you. I'm excited to have you on as our first guest. I know I'm honored, man. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're probably you know figuring some things out how to how how to not have me asking all the questions and make yeah. space for Kyle. Right. Uh, <laughs> now you're a good host, man. You're a good host. I was hanging a couple of times. I was like giving some pauses, like, okay, is Kyle going to jump in with a question? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to go. Man. <laughs> also, like, this is just an entertaining interview. So I think there yeah. were times where I was just like kicking back and listening. Just like, listening. like I'm listening to a podcast live. Yeah. Darko, for the uninitiated, where can the listeners find you on social media? Uh, so on Instagram, you can find me at Darko Lifts. Um, that's my main account. There is a company account. That one kind of goes, uh, kind of ignored at this point, to be honest, uh, or my website, darkerlifting.com, or you can find some of my products on Rogue Fitness's website. So that'd be the main Sweet. One. No, last thing I will say, don't forget if, uh, you go to buy your home gym con tickets, code D Y E L B will save right. you 10%. And you can meet all tickets. three of us. We yeah. can all, all get together. You get your That's tickets, right. and you get you get access to all of this, baby. <laughs> all, all of this, yeah, yeah. So hopefully, you guys come out to Home Gym Con 2025. It is going to be a blast, and it is it's going to be here soon. Like it's already it's already 2025, basically. I don't even right. know where 2024 went. Yeah, but yeah, we're there. Yeah. That's all we got for today. Darko, again, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you, bro. No, thank you, guys. 